Hello, welcome back to my studio. This week we're going to look at painting on paper with oil paint. Now a few years ago I showed how I could paint with oil paint on paper and in that case I had used good quality paper and gessoed the paper and painted over it. But this time I'm going to take the trouble of the whole gesso step out of it and instead use a prepared paper made by Fabriano. The paper is called Taylor. This is 300 gram paper and has a fabric textured surface. So it's got that look of linen. If you have a look at it, you can <laughs> definitely can see that linen texture and uh, it's mimicking a canvas linen for oil painting. So this is suitable for oils and that is very interesting indeed. You can of course paint with oils on paper but typically you would prime it but this you can paint straight on. So that's pretty amazing paper. The paper has a beautiful linen kind of texture and you have to really feel it to believe it. But enough talking, let's have a look at the painting and then decide for yourself. Okay, pretty much my standard palette of oil colors and I'm going to go quickly into a composition. This is not so much about painting a specific subject as rather to demonstrate the paint on this paper. So I'm, I'm using a, a scene which I've more or less painted before, sort of a countryside scene and it's going to have lots of warm color, lots of thick paint. So starting off with getting the right sort of color for the distant mountains. Sort of cool pinkish color. There's not going to be any sky in this particular painting. Um, it's just mountains right up to the top. And then I'll focus on the landscape and on the foreground. One of the things I'm interested in seeing is whether this paper um, buckles at all and does it retain its integrity and whether the paint um, seeps through. If any oil works its way through the paper that would be a problem for me as well. So little interesting things like that. I've just got the paper taped up with some masking tape as you can see and I haven't put anything else on the surface. I'm painting straight onto the paper itself. So getting in a few warmer color notes on those hills. And now some shadows in those mountains. Mostly alizarin crimson and uh, some cerulean blue bit of that orange as well and touch of white kind of desaturating it and uh, the, the light is sort of a could be sunrise, sunset early morning, late afternoon so a warm light and so far I'm pretty happy with the feel of the paper like I said so similar to that canvas feel and it's not like the the brush is making any strange sounds as you drag it across the paper um, all those little things which would kind of irritate you um, it's just going on very easily so now i will get some real thick paint going a bit of impasto really with the um, cadmium yellow and some orange, a bit of alizarin, red, some titanium white and just drag some thick juicy paint across the middle ground of the painting and uh, step that up even as I get towards the foreground. So I'm not going to hold back with this. Just getting it on using a bristle brush as well. So it's all pretty standard approach I would use for regular canvas. 
and with that little bit of linen tooth to the paper it's taking the paint very well it's not sliding across the paper really no problem in that respect at all and I get some darks into the foreground it's just suggesting um, bushes and shrubs and uh, using the ultramarine a little bit of orange also cool down with some cerulean so we're trying to make a nice bit of contrast between the foreground and the warm middle ground of the painting bringing in some Alizarin there, almost an aubergine purple, which I find quite appealing. And now I'm just looking for interesting shapes and textures, filling in the last bits of the foreground landscape, and then I'll add a few little details like a farm gate and some fence posts, and that will be pretty much it. And then I'll assess the painting and we'll have a look and see how the paper is held up. Really buttering the paint on. And uh, it's even wet over wet. I'm having no trouble putting that thick paint down. Well, so far so good. So let's get a few of those details I spoke about. It's a bit of burnt sienna and ultramarine. And a few old fence posts to give some focal point to the painting. Very loosely drawn farm gate this, but uh, it'll do. Of course the paint is very thick and all it's still wet so you put your paint on the brush and drag it over once then you've got to wipe the brush clean because obviously you pick up wet paint from below. So trying to keep clean color notes is sort of a key part of this brushwork for this style of painting. If you put the paint on a bit too thick as I'm doing with this fence post, you can just cut in with some of the yellow color in the background and get that fence post the right shape you want. A few final little fence posts here and that'll be it. few cool color notes, I think setting things off a bit, orange and blue, a few of those complementary colors working together. So I've had fun with this painting and uh, so far I can see absolutely no difference in feel and the painting experience on this paper has been just like painting on canvas with or more like a canvas panel really because I've got that firm support below the paper so very similar to a canvas panel and I, you know, I would probably glue this paper onto a panel as well that is definitely an option which I would like to try out probably the preferred way I would paint and you can take this paper with you when you go painting outdoors or traveling and it's a very lightweight little canvas. So um, 
Yeah, I think that's turned out okay. I'm quite happy with that. Well, I hope that was interesting and gave you something to think about. Now, here's the back of that paper. And as you can see, there's no signs of discoloration or oil seeping through the paper. And here's the painting. So it's gone on perfectly well. I enjoyed applying the paint. I put it on nice and thick and no problem. So how would you frame this? Well, you've got a couple of options. You could use a matte board if you wanted, or you could attach this to a panel or some sort of backing board like um, foam core and frame it in a frame without glass, pretty much as you would do with an oil painting. I would certainly varnish this as usual with retouch varnish to protect the painting surface as well. And that's it. It should give you good results for very many years to come. Okay, make sure you've subscribed to this channel to get the next video as well. And I try to put something up once a week, so be sure to check in for the next painting video as well. Until next time, cheers for now.